Uh, Joe, it's very interesting actually seeing the Aussie dollar finding a bit more momentum despite these growth concerns. But what do we see when it comes to trading in the Chinese currency and the impact of the broader basket there? Hi, hi. Yeah, look, the Chinese currency is uh, coming under pressure. We saw it move under that 100 level on the basket and, you know, and, and traders are talking about it perhaps going to seven in the next few months. This fears of this deepening economic slowdown in China is what's weighing on it, as well as this discord we are starting to see among policymakers as they try to balance these uh, the COVID controls with how to prop up economic growth. And economists now widely expect China to miss its growth target. Uh, and look, and we're also seeing a widening difference differential uh, between U.S. interest rates and Chinese U.S. interest rates as the Fed tightens and as Beijing is coming under pressure to perhaps ease monetary, uh, ease monetary policy to prop up economic growth. And look, all of this is weighing, uh, is weighing on the yuan. Uh, and so far, you know, the the, the, the government hasn't, uh, the central bank hasn't actually come in to, uh, to intervene. They've managed, they've sort of looked at, uh, you know, stronger fixing, reducing FX res reserves. And officials so far have said that the movements are stable and healthy. Also worth noting there that, that historically these next two quarters tend to be quarters of weakness for the yuan. We are seeing dividend payments come up from Chinese companies uh, listed, uh, uh, listed overseas. So look, there's a few things there that are coming together to weigh on the Chinese currency. Let's take a look at U.S. stocks, though, because the narrative of a potential Federal Reserve moderation, not to mention some solid earnings, did help the New York session. But it seems when it comes to the future space, that's not really being sustained. So how are we setting up for the Asia Open? Yeah, look, I think, I think at the start, Asian stocks will perhaps get a bit of a boost from what we saw uh, in the U.S. You also had uh, the, the Chinese stocks that NASDAQ Golden Dragon Index up quite sharply. Uh, so that would probably underpin some sort of gains. Uh, but look, we, yeah, we, you had a Fed survey uh, last night showing that consumers longer term uh, seem to be confident that, that you know, inflationary pressures uh, will ease. You also had those U.S. mortgage rates coming down. And you're looking at incredibly cheap valuations after the sell-off uh, that we've seen. So all of that uh, you know, led to this broad rally that, that we saw in the U.S. But look, I do think that you know, investors perhaps can't get ahead of themselves. We are going into, you know, the, in, into a series of, of Fed interest, uh, interest rate hikes, even though now we are talking uh, about a, uh, a pause. So look, volatility is likely to continue at this stage. It looks like a Asia will get that initial fill-up when it opens, but uh, but yeah, I, I, you know, volatility is is uh, likely to is likely to continue.